Hello, so recently I met up with Keith Barry, who is the lead magic consultant of the Now You See Me Too film. We had a really cool chat and he showed me some magic. If you've not seen that video, then check out the link in the description. But the video that you're about to see is me chatting with Keith. And I had such a tough time editing this video because there's so much great stuff in there. I didn't want to cut any of it out. So I hope you enjoy watching it as much as I enjoyed being in it and chatting with Keith. Without further ado, here is a chat with Keith Barry. Today I'm joined with one of the leading mind readers, magician, performers in the world right now, incredibly respected in the magic world. I'm joined with Keith Barry. Hello. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you very much for joining me on this lovely, lovely, nice blue sofa. I could go for a little snooze here soon. I like it here. I know. It's nice, isn't very it? Calming. It's nice and cosy and just yeah. relaxing. You've done all sorts of things. We could sit and chat for hours. <laughs> yeah. We don't have that much time. You've done um, magic on TV or mind reading on TV. You've done live shows. Um, recently you've done some consulting for the Now You See Me Too film. Yeah. There are so many different types of magician in the film. You've got to have such a huge varied skill set. Yeah. yeah, I mean, for me, I come from a magic background. I obviously perform a lot of the different allied arts, escapology, hypnosis, mentalism. It's always a challenge, more so from the perspective that I worked on the script also for 12 months with Ed yeah. Solomon. So the effects and demonstrations for the most part in the movie uh, I was very heavily involved in in the script writing process. Then to make those come to life is a whole different process because with Now You See Me Too, the whole ethos that John Chu brought to the table was he wanted as much of the magic on camera that could be done in real life as possible. So in other words, squash down the CGI. Of course, it's movie land. There's always going to be CGI. With Dave Franco, I had to figure out a way, an actual method for the three card Monty to work in camera. And if you watch it closely, uh, when we reveal those magic moments, they're all shot in scene in one camera. In that moment, people can still suspect that there's a camera trick until the end when we reveal it. Now it's revealed very quickly because the movie originally I think was three hours long and they had to squash it down to two hours. Oh, so wow. it's done quite quickly. Uh, but the three card Monty sequence was done in camera in one scene in one shot. My comfort zone, if you like, is on stage, like in front of a thousand or two thousand people at a time. So I don't really perform close up anymore. So I had to brush up, for example, on the three card trick because what not a lot of people know, and I'll give uh, you a little exclusive on this, oh, yeah, go on. is that in the original movie, Dave Franco actually performed the close up version of the three card trick. And uh, I taught him that and he could do it himself. It got cut from the movie for time uh, purposes. But I had to relearn the, the whole three, three card trick, and... uh, Which guys out there will know the basic moves are relatively simple. But then I learned the whole thing. I learned everything. Every Bend single corner, variation. Dodge, everything. Yeah. And I taught him as much of it as possible. Then Lizzie Kaplan, but she wanted uh, a lot of her ideas in the movie. So for example, ripping the head off a, a pigeon. So I had to go to you know, pigeon experts. Then I went to a dove magician. So I had to learn myself how to produce doves, then teach Lizzie how to produce doves. But it was fun and I loved it. I loved the challenge. One of the things when watching any magic film as a magician, I think you think, I wish that they did real magic. They did magic tricks that magicians yeah. are doing. And I think you can tell in this film that there's a l all the stuff is feasibly possible. Yeah, the plot had to come first, then we had to interject magic that made sense within the plot, but then also magic that we could expose. And I was very mindful of not exposing things that uh, would anger the magic community. So you had some rules going into it. You had some, I guess, principles that you didn't want to, you didn't want to, Expose too much, but you want to give the audience a little bit of an insight into how magic works Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. And look, it's Hollywood. I mean, the executives and, and the people working on the movie, they're mindful of magic, but the, their primary, I suppose, objective and their primary purpose is to make a successful movie. So my job within that was to try and manage what was yeah. being revealed because there was some uh, discussions, we'll call them, about <laughs> revealing other things in that movie that I was like, blatantly no we're not going to reveal that we're not doing that and there's a lot of little nuggets in there that you have to look closely for in the magic community in the back room of the the magic shop there's a lot of props there and lizzie kaplan's reading a magazine it's that's actually a, a genie magazine from 2006 uh, nice. which i was the front cover of oh so you can't really see it but now that you know it if you look for it so there's lots of the different things i like really want to rewatch it and just try and pick up on as many of those did things you see as me in the movie no you see were, where i'm in the you? movie <laughs> where are you in see? the film rehearsing this kind of thing and teaching non-magicians magic it's nice that everyone seemed to have got into the spirit of trying to learn this stuff yeah. um, all the actors seem to really take it on board and, and try and master it but some of that choreography and like the card throwing mm. stuff and the passing and the without spoiling it too much but manipulating the single playing card yeah. must have taken a long time to rehearse with the cast and to master how long does it take to do stuff like this i mean that took a bit of 
a week or maybe two weeks to film that oh. one piece. But but I was really proud of like people like Lizzie Kaplan and just the little nuggets that we came up with where she had it in a tank eye palm. Yeah. Uh, and the, from that angle, you can't see it, but then the camera revolves around and you can see the card hidden in her hand. And, and then it's really like, wow, that could, stuff could really be done. So other than Now You See Me Too, what have you been working on recently? So I've been in pre-production of your back in the room for USA. So finding the people who are susceptible to hypnosis. I went down to Australia in January and filmed your back in the room for Channel 9 in Australia. That was in the middle of my tour in Ireland. Yeah, because you're doing a live show at the same time, right? Yeah, it was oh crazy. Gosh. I've got Keith Barry, hypno magician, to film for TV3 in Ireland, which I'm very excited about because it's a new format. I don't want to say too much. It's going to be a mixture of hypnosis and magic. Uh, but the magic will be related to hypnosis. So uh, without saying too much, that's what it'll be. Keith Barry, Hypno Magician on TV3, and then I'm going to tour again, so I've got to write my new tour. I've got about half of it written already, so... So in short, that. you're incredibly busy. Busy, yeah. <laughs> that's it's one heck of a work yeah, schedule. Yeah, yeah. Hypnosis is one of those things which people are so sceptical about from the get-go. How do you approach that when you're even doing the TV show? Well, it's difficult with that particular show because obviously... Uh, I'm part of the show, but I don't own the formats. Well, you know, with my own shows, I executive produce all my own shows, so I'm in essence in charge of the content that ends up on screen. Right. Whereas with that particular show, it's a production company; they have the ultimate say of what ends up on screen. I like to show the process of hypnosis a lot more than perhaps what's shown on your back in the room. But I do understand you've got the 1952 hypnosis yeah, act here. Yeah, that's uh, a good one. And isn't everybody's it? very scared of that here yeah. at the moment. Like very often, even in places like YouTube and people like you, honestly, half the time, they're like, don't do any hypnosis. You're not allowed to do hypnosis. It, it, oh, yeah. We've got to check with our lawyers, it psychologically evaluate Stephen before he does anything. You know. I think there's, it's illegal to do hypnosis in a bar. No, it's illegal for the, the manager of the bar to not call the police if you're doing hypnosis or something really strange, yeah. obscure law about that. Yeah. It's weird. And the problem with not showing the process of hypnosis, that adds to the level of can this be done or can't it be done? And once again, all I say to people is, look, I'm not here to convince skeptics I stopped doing that years ago and the only way for people to see if this is real or not real is to go to a live hypnotist and then go up and get on stage and see can you be, be hypnotized at least when you're there either one of your family members or somebody from the row in front of you is going to end up hypnotized on stage and that's when you see the transition of people from being skeptics into oh my god that's my husband this is the selfish part of the interview where I just want to get your advice because Obviously, you're a heck of a lot more successful than me. What advice do you have to any person that's getting into magic, particularly someone like me that's wanting to do stuff for media, whether it's TV or YouTube, and wanting to hopefully do a live show and stuff like that? Do you have any general advice? No, that's yeah, a sure. Question. I, I mean, well, first of all, success is what you, you measure it yourself, I think, really. I mean, you, you've got your thing going on on YouTube, so don't ever knock yourself. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? yeah. You know, I remember years ago when I decided in my head I'm going to be a full-time professional magician, and I remember listening to an interview with Will Smith. It really resonated with me because they said to him look is it talent and then he said no he said when all the other rappers are in bed I'm up practicing my rapping he doesn't mean till 12 or 1 o'clock at night he means two three hours sleep a night until you break whatever it is that you're trying to break I still live by that sleep when you're dead I spend more hours working uh, than any other entertainer certainly in Ireland that I know uh, and I know the other guys that are on TV even though very often in the magic world uh, people knock uh, not only myself, but Dynamo and, and you know Darren and, and all the other guys on, on TV. You have to understand, these people are in that position. Of course, there has to be a certain element of talent, but all of these people work harder than anybody I know. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is just never stop. Andrew Gerard, who's a great friend of mine, an uh, amazing hypnotist and, and mentalist in his own right in Canada, and he uh, you know, consults with me a lot. And he said, Keith, uh, you know, you have to push to failure. In other words, fail. Like, don't worry about failing. If you're going to just uh, try and instantly hypnotize somebody on camera in a live environment, do it. And if you fail, you fail. No, don't worry about what people say about it. And then, honestly, you can bleep this out, f*** the Brick Rogers. Because for me, I don't listen to any of that negativity or noise anymore. And if people are knocking you, just ignore them. I do believe, uh, for the most part, not the whole part, nice guys win. The nice guys win through. I know a lot of guys, a lot of magicians, that I've met over the years, uh, very talented guys, way more talented than me perhaps, uh, but they didn't uh, push through. It's because they were relying too much on technique, on tricks, and then also they got too big for the boots too early. You just sit on your ego and uh, have fun as well. I mean, I think we're all taking ourselves too seriously these days. And keep doing serial tricks. Serial tricks, I like a lot. <laughs> I like serial tricks. I want to see another serial trick. Yeah, serial, man. It's all about the serial magic. That's it. 
Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. Follow Keith on all of his social media type things. Links in the description. And go check out Now You See Me Too. I had a really fun time watching it. And tiny plug for myself. Go follow me on Snapchat and Instagram where I post my life and also little magic videos every now and again.